It's been more than two years since this beautiful and talented flight attendant from the Philippines was found dead in a hotel bathtub following a New Year's party with her friends. This perplexing case captured the attention of both the national and international media, and people speculated whether her death was a mere accident or the result of an assault. What transpired that night in that hotel room? Today, we will delve into the mysterious death of Christine de Serra. Christine Angelica Faba da Serra was born on April 13, 1997, in General Santos, Philippines. At the time of the incident, she was 23 years old. She was the second of four siblings, Monica, Chloe, and JJ. Her parents, John Nestor da Serra and Sharon Rose Faba da Serra, affectionately called her Ika. Christine was known to be intelligent and self-assured. She graduated cum laude with a bachelor's degree in communication arts, majoring in media arts, from the University of the Philippines, Mindanao, in 2017. Christine also explored the realms of modeling and pageantry. She competed in the Miss Silka Davao pageant in 2017 and clinched the position of first runner-up. In 2019, she participated in the Mutiang Davao pageant and thanks to her talent and beauty, emerged as one of the finalists. In 2019, seeking new horizons, Christine left her family home in General Santos to relocate to Manila. It was around this time that she embarked on a career as a flight attendant with Philippine Airlines. Her social media posts reflected her pride and joy in her job. Christine's colleagues held her in high regard, attributing their respect to her professionalism, elegance, and amiable nature. Christine de Serra was deeply cherished by her family and adored by all who knew her. Her family often recalled how Christine harbored dreams of showing them the world. On a seemingly ordinary day near New Year's Eve in 2020, Christine's mother received a call at 11.37 p.m. It was her daughter, informing her that she planned to ring in the new year with some friends at the City Garden Grand Hotel in Makati, Metro Manila. Many noted that Christine predominantly had male friends, finding it easier to bond with them. Among these friends, Romel Galido, Ray Anglis, Rui de Lima, John Reyes de la Serna, and Clark Jezreel Rapinan were the first to reserve the room for their gathering. John was the earliest to arrive, checking in by 11 a.m. and procuring the key to room 2209. Christine joined later, and as the day progressed, more friends trickled in. It's worth mentioning that not everyone at the gathering knew Christine personally. Some attendees were friends of her friends. One such individual was Gregorio Angelo Rafael de Guzman, invited by Romel. Romel also extended invitations to other acquaintances like Valentin Rosales, Mark Anthony Rosales, Jamir Cunanan, and Edward Madrid. John Paul Halili, the hotel manager, reportedly joined the group's festivities later in the evening. According to police records, Christine and her friends had been reveling in the popular nightlife districts of Poblacion in Makati. By 12.30 a.m., they arrived at the City Garden Hotel, already under the influence of alcohol. Not long after, Christine made a video call to her family to extend her New Year's wishes. In the recording, she radiated joy and excitement, updating her family on the party's proceedings. Some of her friends even chimed in with greetings. It was a heartwarming interaction between Christine and her family, miles apart in another city. Regrettably, this would be the last time they heard from her. On January 1st, 2021, after an evening filled with festivities, Christine's unresponsive body was discovered by Romel in the bathtub of room 2207 at 10 a.m. Mistaking her condition for excessive inebriation, Romel attempted to rouse her, suggesting she relocate to the bed if she wished to rest. But Christine remained silent, her hand clutching her abdomen. 
Concerned for her comfort, Rommel provided her with a pillow and draped a blanket over her, then returned to his own rest. Approximately two hours later, at around 12 p.m., Rommel revisited the bathroom, intending to remind Christine of their imminent departure and check out. To his horror, he found her lifeless, her lips tinged with a purple hue, and her complexion an alarming shade of white and blue. Panicking, he notified the five friends still present in the room. In their distress, they removed Christine from the bathtub, attempting CPR to the best of their knowledge, while others sought assistance from the hotel staff. Upon seeing Christine's condition, the hotel staff immediately called for an ambulance and brought a wheelchair. Valentin Rosales, while assisting in placing Christine's body onto the wheelchair, observed that it was undersized, making it challenging to accommodate her stiff and straightened legs. They swiftly moved her to the hotel's clinic in a desperate attempt to resuscitate her, but to no avail. Recognizing the gravity of the situation, Christine's friends and the hotel staff transported her to the Makati Medical Center. Her family was immediately notified, prompting Christine's aunt to rush to the hospital. Heartbreakingly, upon examination by the medical team, Christine was declared dead on arrival at 12.25 p.m. The following day, January 2nd, Christine's remains were transferred to the Rezai Funeral Home in Passe City for a post-mortem examination. Subsequently, the Southern Police District Crime Laboratory Office issued a medical report. The findings indicated that Christine died of a ruptured aortic aneurysm. About 150 milliliters of a darkened fluid, presumed to be blood, was retrieved from her stomach. A ruptured aortic aneurysm refers to a tear in the layers of the aorta wall, resulting in internal bleeding as blood leaks from the vessel. This condition can be lethal and arises due to various factors including age, family history, traumatic injury, and notably, persistent high blood pressure. The report also highlighted the presence of a well-healed laceration in the genital area, suggesting that this injury had occurred significantly prior to the night of her death. Notably, the report did not identify any secretions or semen in the genital area. A complication arose with fluid analysis because Christine's body had been embalmed before the autopsy. Furthermore, the report documented multiple contusions on Christine's body. These included a bruise on the back of her right palm, two on her right thigh, several on both knees and ankles, and one on her right foot. An ambiguous needle puncture mark was noted on her right hand, with the origin of the injury remaining uncertain. Despite the report primarily attributing Christine's death to an aneurysm, lingering suspicions permeated both the police department and the family. On January 4th, under the leadership of General Debold Sinas, the Philippine National Police publicly classified Christine de Serra's death as a case of assault homicide. Consequently, sexual assault and homicide complaints were lodged against 11 individuals known to have been in Christine's company on New Year's Day. Regrettably, most of Christine's associates were reportedly uncooperative with the investigation. As a result, law enforcement resorted to issuing an ultimatum and initiating a manhunt to locate all those who had celebrated with Christine in rooms 2209 and 2207. The family remained steadfast in their conviction that Christine had been victimized by the very individuals she had celebrated with that New Year's Eve. As this revelation rippled through the public, many were left dumbfounded, questioning how such a tragedy could transpire. To shed light on the events of that fateful evening, let's delve into the CCTV footage from that night. In the available CCTV footage, Christine was observed at 11.21 p.m. transitioning from room 2209 to room 2207 with her friends. It appeared that other acquaintances from their group were in the adjoining room and Christine seemed enthusiastic about joining them. Inside room 2207, she was captured on video engaging in a clapping game with the attendees, with reports suggesting she won that night. 
By 11.37 p.m., Christine and her circle of friends were spotted returning to their original room. Post this footage, it appeared that the group predominantly remained within their room, likely aligning with the timeline of Christine's phone call to her family extending New Year greetings. As the clock near 2.50 a.m., Christine and Valentine were depicted venturing out of room 2209 to pay a visit to room 2207, just the two of them. Roughly a minute post their departure, room service approached the door of 2209, possibly in response to a request for additional mattress. By 2.52 a.m., Christine and Valentine returned, with the footage capturing a moment where Christine attempted to kiss Valentine near the doorway. Valentine seemed hesitant, gently evading the gesture before they proceeded inside. The subsequent footage at around 3.15 a.m. showed Christine making her way to room 2207 solo. Merely six minutes later, an individual from room 2207 made his way to room 2209, soon leaving accompanied by some of Christine's companions. This fueled speculation that Christine may have been the focal point of a commotion, prompting her friends to intervene. The footage depicted three of her friends escorting her back, seemingly attempting to appease her with a hug prior to their re-entry. At around 4.13 a.m., she was documented in the hallway outside room 2207, exhibiting evident signs of intoxication. As she gestured dramatically, leaning backward perilously, her friend, John Reyes, intervened. Christine asked him to physically support her to prevent her from falling, and she was captured pressing the doorbell before making her way inside room 2209. Subsequently, at 4.39 a.m., Christine was captured exiting room 2209, accompanied by Valentine Rosales. She appeared more composed compared to earlier footage, walking steadily. Fast forward to 5.05 a.m., a playful scene unfolded in the hallway, showcasing Christine and Romel Galido in high spirits, seemingly in a friendly chase. In this frame, Christine exhibited no indications of discomfort or anguish. However, a contrasting image was painted at 6.26 a.m., with footage portraying Valentine carrying Christine from the vicinity of the 227 hallway back to room 2209. This marked the final CCTV appearance of the young flight attendant. The narrative took a contentious turn when police chief depositar of the Makati police station insinuated the presence of semen within Christine's system, yet such assertions lacked corroborative documentation. Chief depositar made generalizations about masculine instincts, alluding to potential impulses that might arise in intoxicated states. But Christine's friends refuted the charges. They emphasized their homosexual orientation, asserting that they would never harm Christine. Gregorio Guzman, a party attendee, depicted Christine as the odd woman out, noting that the evening's flirtations were predominantly between the male attendees. He also stated that she was well-liked by all 12 men present that night and felt comfortable hanging out with LGBT members. Adding another layer of complexity, Christine's family lodged a grievance against Michael Nick Sarmiento, the medical legal officer who handled their daughter's body following her death. They accused him of gross negligence and professional ineptitude due to Sarmiento's decision to embalm Christine's body without the consent of her family. Christine's family affirmed that the bruises and contusions found on her legs and arms served as enough evidence that there was foul play. A counter-narrative has emerged, with five of Christine's friends strongly denying any accusations of assaulting her. While they couldn't identify the exact cause of Christine's bruises, they provided potential explanations. They remembered Christine visiting the restroom frequently to vomit and even presented a photograph as evidence. They also noted that she had been vomiting from 3 a.m. to 7 a.m., suggesting that her bruises might have resulted from those incidents. The friends also clarified why Christine's clothes were different when she was removed from the wheelchair. 
They explained that Christine had vomited at one point, soiling her clothes. Seeing her level of intoxication and her inability to care for herself, they assisted her in changing into a hotel bathrobe before she went to sleep. As for the linear bruise on her thigh, they suspected it was caused by the wheelchair, given the difficulty they had in seating her properly. However, Christine's mother, Sharon Dacera, firmly rejected both the medical claims and the testimonies from Christine's friends. She argued that it was implausible for Christine to have died of natural causes, given that she was a healthy young woman. Sharon pointed out that if there had been any health issues, Philippine Airlines would have certainly recorded them during Christine's medical examinations. On January 10th, 2021, the National Bureau of Investigation, NBI, took over the perplexing case. The Bureau initiated an investigation, collecting samples and evidence from both rooms rented that night. The NBI team was able to extract 100 milliliters of urine from her body. During the second hearing of the preliminary trial on January 27th, the previously filed homicide charge was dismissed. The court referenced an examination report authored by another medical officer, Dr. Joseph Palmero. The report indicated that the immediate cause of Christine's death was cardiopulmonary arrest, stemming from a ruptured aortic aneurysm. At the time of her death, it was determined that Christine's blood pressure was exceptionally high, and her heart weighed 500 grams, 200 grams more than an average heart. Once the aorta ruptured, she experienced blood loss, which manifested in symptoms like nausea, weakness, and sweating, distinguishing her sensations from typical hangover symptoms. Regrettably, Christine passed away within hours due to the ruptured aorta. It was emphasized that the aneurysm had started developing well before Christine's celebration that evening. Dr. Joseph Palmero found no mixed DNA in the undergarment Christine wore that night. With no evidence of sexual assault or foul play, the 11 men who were with Christine that night were cleared of charges and subsequently released on April 23, 2021. Understandably, Christine's family was displeased with the verdict. Responding to their discontent on January 29, 2021, Salvador Pinello, a presidential spokesperson, criticized the family, stating that they could not seek justice for a crime that didn't occur, deny the overwhelming evidence, and aim to penalize innocent individuals. On January 7th at 10 a.m., Christine's body, flown via Philippine Airlines Airbus A330, arrived in General Santos. She was laid to rest at Forest Lake Memorial Park on January 10th. Christine de Serra's case elicited varied reactions from the media. Some criticized Christine for her choice in France. In many parts of Asia, there's still a prevalent bias against women who maintain close friendships with many males, suggesting these women knowingly place themselves in precarious situations. Netizens scrutinized Christine's attire, drinking habits, and choices to party with her male friends. However, this perspective incited a significant backlash. Several hashtags in defense of Christine and other assault victims gained traction on social media. While some concurred with the official medical reports suggesting previously undiagnosed hypertension, others conjectured about drug overdoses or drink spiking, hinting at an assault. The autopsy dismissed these notions, stating that neither alcohol nor recreational drugs would cause aortic dilation or defects. While calls for justice persisted, the emphasis shifted towards uncovering the truth for both Christine and those accused. The men from the party were unjustly depicted as abusers and criminals, even in the absence of solid evidence. Gregorio Guzman also spoke out about the damaging effects of online accusations directed at him. Christine de Serra's death remains unsolved. Current narratives lean towards natural causes, though her family remains unconvinced. Christine de Serra's mysterious death continues to be a topic of speculation and debate, leaving a lasting imprint on many. 
Whatever your perspective, it's a tragic reminder of life's unpredictability. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.